Oboe's right before Oboe. Uh, Oboe's Oscar, Whiskey, Echo, Bravo, Oscar. I know what was before that, though. now is just make sure the engines been running properly so he get up to speed so it has a dual ignition system hitting two seven zero climb maintain three thousand so I just check both again both of uh, the sides of it uh, check the alternator so that jet fuel looks good car Is that their waypoints or what? Uh, yeah, so it's. Um, and then the uh, Anthem 3 arrival, 3000. So it's, it's pretty much GPS waypoints to get there because uh, East Coast is pretty traffic, pretty heavy with the traffic. So, I mean, even if you like, take a commercial flight, there's like a specific way they fly to get there. Um, so that's just. It's just those are the, the, the points because they, they asked for a clearance and so they this, they gave them the clearance. And then, I don't know if you, at the end they said they asked for a certain arrival and so there's a certain set of arrival instructions. So once you get towards Philadelphia, there's like a predetermined set of instructions. So there's like, gotcha. it gets you to the start point and then there's a certain set of start point instructions when you get to like the area of Philadelphia to get in gotcha. based on how the winds are coming and stuff. So. Once they get there, is that manual, or is that does that plane do that for them? That plane does that for them. <laughs> I mean, anything beyond, like, this plane. I mean, even this, like, if this plane had an autopilot, I mean, this could you just, like, punch it all in, and it, it'd do everything pretty much about land for you, or yeah. it could. So, brakes at flight controls, thumbs, thumbs. Uh, fuel set for both, trim set for takeoff, extra. Uh, Fox 7 Golf, Ohio State Tower, and into the left yeah. base, runway 27, left clear to land, 12109. Checked out in a vacuum. Oh. At 6 Kilo Bravo, go ahead and uh, report 23 in the outer belt for your base entry now for runway 27 left. So we're just going to head off to the west. Maybe we'll go and scope that field that I've never been to. It'll be a decent flight. Transponders on. Landing lights. We'll do that on navigation. Throttle. Just traffic clearance. Briggs Reese. Whoops. Um. My knee's going to be in your way? Uh, not really. Um. I mean, if you you can put them on the the rudder pedals, and as long as they like move, there and it won't be a big deal. It should be fine. Okay. That's set. Talk to tower. Uh. Sure. Finals clear. Tower three one two six echoes uh, ready for takeoff at two seven left. Tesla three one two six echo state tower ultra runway two seven left landing traffic. Hold short three one two six echo. Oh yeah. What do you say? Somebody's coming. Yeah, you can see him. Yep. what that bulb thing is on the left wing. Tower 6 Kilo Bravo, uh, 23 and out of road. Out of road. Huh. 6 Kilo Bravo, I will have one departure party arrival on 2 7 left. Clear to land, 1 2 0 8. Clear to land, 2 7 left, uh, looking for the departure. 6 Kilo Bravo. So it's 8 7 Golf, turn left at Delta via Alpha, taxi to parking, monitor ground point 7 to the ramp. 
All right, Delta Alpha point seven to the ramp, five three eight tough golf. Delta three one two six Echo Tower, no delay departure runway two seven off clear for takeoff on course. Bananas on our right base of that runway. Clear to take off for two seven left, no delay three one two six Echo. So you see these white numbers on the right and the left, fours? Yep. I mean, there's 4,000 foot of runway left. Nice. All right, full power. There's Pete's alive, there's it in the green arc. Away we go. So all these different runways, are those based on wind? Yep. There's just one active runway here at any given time? So they have two parallel ones, and typically on a busy day, the one on the right will have student OSU traffic in it. Okay. What does OSU use this for? Flying. I mean, I... Like flying, uh... Oh, just trainers. trainers. For, it's for the flight school. Gotcha pretty stiff wind. Okay, so this is sawmill we just flew over. Yeah. That's like, there's like Myers and all that shit over here. Um, you can kind of kind of see the outer belt. The outer belt's just like the 270. Yeah. Um, what river? Oil and Tangy. So there's like downtown Dublin, like the built up area if you've ever yep. been down there. Yep. Has like pins and uh, bars and shit. Yep. Um, so here, uh, straight ahead, kind of that white dome, there's actually a Bo Jackson training facility for like high school kids and shit. And if you look down, there's like pretty big houses right up on the river, so. Yeah. Um, How high will we go? Um, feet. Right now we're a thousand feet up. Um, nothing too crazy. And where do you normally chill? I usually am training somewhere, going someplace like an airport north of Delaware. There's Marysville. Um, Are you required to stay a certain height? No. Um, so here you can see the VSI. We must be picking up a little bit of heat over the asphalt from the days. So we're, I'm not really climbing, but we're doing 500 feet. So that was like bump we felt. Um, again, here's 270. Six Kilo Bravo, turn off to Charlie via Alpha Taxi to parking, monitor ground point seven. So you can kind of see. Uh, Charlie, uh, taxi to parking via Alpha will monitor ground on point seven. Six Kilo Bravo. But here's, it's not far, and here's farmland. You know. Yeah. Um, so there's kind of at the base and just to the left of where that river, where the river kind of like skinnies, like straight off to our, our right. Yep. There's the big parking lot for the zoo. Oh, really? Yeah. Where's this going? Marysville? Yeah. Is that what I'm looking at down there? Yep. Let's go check this place out. So and then, go ahead. No, I mean, this is it. It's just checking shit out. Golf course is that? Um, it's not. It's not like the the, the memorials over there. Pretty much right off our right wing. You can kind of see there's like.
and it'll, I'll head over this way a little bit more just because probably cooler cooler to see people's houses and shit, but like, uh... Do what you, do what you want to do, I'm cool. Uh, so you kind of see this weird, uh, I don't know, there's like the pond with like the fountains in it, it's, it's coming up and there's like big, big houses and shit over there. Yeah. Apparently like the big yellow ones and the, there's a big orange one that's kind of facing this way along the lake. Yep. Someone spent like 20 million to build those things, this was like 10 years ago maybe or something, and then never like got the members or whatever and they sold it for like 3 million like <laughs> <laughs> 10 years ago or something. Here's a little park, like, uh, I don't know, I've, I've been to that park, but it's just like, there's like some playground equipment for adults and stuff, and I'll, over here to our left, I'm going to turn that way, you can see another plane in the sky, you see them, got their lights on, nope, yep, so, uh, it's funny because like, people be like, oh, I don't understand how no one could find another plane in the sky. It was a clear, crystal clear day, man. It's hard as fuck to find a plane, especially well, if it's below you. I was going to say, okay. when you were trying to point at it, I'm like, oh yeah, I have to look up too. <laughs> <laughs> Not just straight across. Yeah, because there's no, there's no roads, so to speak, that people are going to be on necessarily. They're flying over the top of us. So um, there's like newer technology that's really just been implemented. So you can you can see them. It says it's plus 500, so they're 500 feet above us, and the, that white like arrow is yeah. them. So they're 479 inbound visual 27. What the fuck are they doing? I have no idea. And uh, as long as they're above us, I don't really give a shit. Something 479. you know the right base from like 500 feet isn't that much though, is it? Uh, I mean it is, but it uh, isn't. Yeah. Northwoods, 479. They're probably just checking us out. I don't know. Okay, so at least I don't know. It looks fly upside down and cheers a coke or whatever. <laughs> There's like a maybe there's rain over there. Or it's oh, yeah. just darker, but I mean it looks it looks like a decent decent day actually. And there's definitely rain to our left. Yeah. Way off in the distance you can They're see. They're just it. spotty all over. Yeah. Yeah. So you can kind of see. Well, I know what I'm looking for, but um, there's the Marysville Airport right over there. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you can see it, but uh, you can see the runway is headed that way. It's an east-west runway. So. Yeah, I see it. Call Team 5 to Flame and Ground. Good afternoon. You're close to the Oakland Airport. Radio vectors to the PCAS intersection. Direct the Terry intersection. Direct the Rosewood View. Are, are we still in radio contact with Ohio State? Uh, I'm still on their radio frequency, so 118.8 okay. is their frequency. Okay. Um, Zero minutes after departure. Departure control frequency is 125.95. Squawk 73. Uh, I can be five. Temperature 9. Now I don't have to listen to him. I think the patches of trees are always pretty amazing. I mean, even just from the highway. But why did those areas remain wooded? I mean, now they're wooded so that some rich dude could, could build a mansion in them. Yeah. Well, that's a very good question. I mean, farmland that was just too much of a pain in the butt to go and... Um, yeah. There's something, a creek or something, you know, yeah. a wet area. The, uh, the, the area where there's, like, clean rows of trees are kind of funny, too. You can't see it from this direction, but... From from back there, part of this group of trees was all planted oh. straight line rows. That place in North Carolina we go to, you get like 20, 20 minutes out. There's like an entire forest that's all just planted pine trees, all row by row. It's hilarious, for sure. So are you
you required to fly at a certain height? Um, yes. So, above 3,000 feet above the ground, we have uh, east-west rules. So if your heading is east, east, <laughs> you're supposed to be odd thousand feet plus 500 feet. So, uh, you know, like 35, 55, 75, 100 feet. Yeah. And then west, it's even plus 500. And then if you're on an instrument flight plan, it's straight up even or odd with no 500 added. So it's kind of like traffic separation, but... Like, you said east or west, what about north or south? So, from zero to 179 degrees is east, 180 to 359 degrees is west. Gotcha. That's just how they do it. So there's really not a whole bunch to it, just get up, point wherever you want to go, and that's about it, really. So your controls, the pedals are? The rudder. Yep. Okay. Up. Down. And then left. And right. Yep. And it's, uh... There's this weird thing, these... This plane is modern enough from the 70s that there's this thing called, that they call adverse yaw. So, well, you can kind of see in the distance, like if your eyes are good enough, I see like buildings way off in the distance and then off to the more directly west, I think you see the hills and stuff. So there's a little bit of hills around Bell Fountain. Yep. So I think you can kind of see that shit over there. But, like, straight ahead to the left a little bit, I think I, I see little, little sticks pointing up on the, the horizon. Yeah, I agree. Um, what direction are we right now? Where, where are we right now? Northwest of uh, Columbus. <laughs> um, so we're, what, 310 degree heading? So, you know, like... So we're really about 45 degrees. Yeah. How far is the horizon from here? 30 miles, 40 miles, 50 miles, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, we're, we're, not, we're not that high up, so we're like 1,600 feet above the ground. I mean, there, I know there's websites you can look to, like, yeah. figure it out. But, I mean, you can, this is a really nice day um, that you can see this far. Some some fall days, or you, fall and winter are usually pretty decent days that... Uh, see pretty fall because usually there's in the summer there's all the moisture in there and like in the fall and and winter the moisture's out of the air such that it's uh pretty clear it always amazes me that there's still some pretty freaking huge houses out here in the yeah in the woods So for small adjustments, do you just use this to change direction? Yeah. I mean, so, uh, I, never, I never really fully spoke about it, but so there's this thing in older planes, and it's called, well, it happens with any plane, but they've kind of engineered it out with this newer plane, is adverse yaw. So when, when I, I use the ailerons, uh, this one cocks up and that one cocks down. Okay. So with it cocked down, it produces more lift and that produces less lift. So that's why it tilts. Yeah. But since that wing is now producing more lift and this one is producing less, there's more drag on that side of the wing. So even though you're trying to turn this way, gotcha. So the wing, the plane kind of wants to turn this way. So you use the rudder to kind of curl it a little bit. Yeah. So that's. That's kind of what happens, so. And the newer plane automatically does a little bit of that? Yeah, so they kind of have, like, 
linkage between me turning the the, the aileron, sorry if I disturb you, with with the rudder a little bit. Okay. So. So there's a quarry of some sort over there. Looks like we're getting a little bit of these bumps. Um, I'm not sure if it's from the wind, because it is kind of a little bit windier today than, than typical. Have you ever researched um, like what percent of Ohio was wooded before we far started farming it? No. Because there were savannas and shit too, I think. Like buffaloes and... Yeah, I mean, I'm pretty sure there's buffaloes and stuff. What kind of range does this plane have? 400 miles, 500 miles maybe, probably 400. Uh, you can see windmills. Follow this road straight out on the horizon are windmills. No, oh, no kidding, I see him. I don't see the buildings anymore, do you? No, uh, they must have, like... Gotten this side of the horizon? Yeah, I mean, I kind of see one, one or two out there, but, yeah. All right, where the hell is this airfield? <laughs> Are you looking for it now? <laughs> yeah. So it has, it's grass. It should be straight ahead. There's a, there's a, the runways are one five and three three. So it's, it should be aligned with, oh, there it is. I see it. Okay. So you see this, uh, maybe two, three, I think a, a whole hand above the cowling. There's a green strip that heads off that way from the road a little bit. There's like a yep. few, and that's that's the landing runway. Oh, nice. I do see it. You want to, you want to stop in and land? Check it out, or I'm, you don't give a shit? I'm game for whatever, man. All right, well... We Elliot's landing traffic, uh, Cessna 3126 Echo, we're just about three miles to the south field, entering a downwind for runway 15, Elliot's landing. So, full power back. See 
how this goes. So this landing is going to be bumpy just because it's grass and it's not super soft. Yep. So once we land, it's going to be like it's going to drive like driving a car on grass, kind of at high speed, because we're going to be hitting the ground at a decent clip. What's our landing speed? 65, 70 miles an hour. You turn around and land in the other way. Yep. Because we're going to land into the wind. Elias Landing Traffic, Sky 3126 Echo is turning base from a 15 Elias Landing. This is an unmonitored, just kind of when you start to fuck around with it, get on the frequency and talk to each other? Yep. So it's, it's a non-towered airfield. So it... It doesn't mean that it's not controlled. So there's a train coming at us. You can see the light. Uh -huh. um, it right, right. It just means that like untowered. Yeah, there's no, there's no one, there's no one controlling the air traffic flow. Yes, another carriage mixture, fuel pump, seat belt switches, lights. So you pretty much land with power off because you don't want to be going too fast when you smoke the ground. Looks like some nice junk in that guy's yard. Elliot's <laughs> landing, Scott. 3126 Echo, short final for runway 15, Elliot's landing. Mike, you got treated, man. That was like one of the softest landings I've done in a coon's age. Jesus. <laughs> I was going to say, that was smooth. <laughs> Tell me he's going to be all bumpy and shit. Like, I was bumpy like this. Man. I was like, are we down yet? <laughs> <laughs> Elliot's Landing Traffic, Sky 3126 Echoes, uh, back taxing runway 1533, Elliot's Landing. It's funny how crude the uh, speed control is. I mean, so it's it's actually differential pressure. So there's oh, I'm sorry, no, that you're it, it it's it's just ram air going into that that's called a pitot tube. So it's just air going into it. So it's all air speed. It's not ground speed. It doesn't right, right. You're talking about the the instrumentation. Yeah, so the... Uh, I'm talking about the throttle. Oh, just the stick? Yeah, <laughs> no, yeah. I mean, well, that. I mean, that's what... Uh, um, it's like a boat. Yeah, or, <laughs> you know? or a car, really. Your, yeah. the, the accelerator pedal is the same thing. Yep. All right, I don't want to go too fast, just in case this field's soft, but... Right, we can stop it and get ice cream or fucking boogie and go take off. I don't really give a shit. Doesn't matter to me. Alright, I kind of did want to see what this field was all about, because I know people come down here for ice cream and shit, and it's... I thought it was a little bit bigger instead of just like a truck stop on a corner, but... Nice to know that the grass is fucking smooth as shit, no? Yeah, no kidding.
Uh, disclaimer, like, my landing back at Ohio State is probably not going to be that smooth. <laughs> you're you're going to feel it. You're like, yeah, we landed. <laughs> <laughs> Weather is pretty beautiful up. Yeah, I mean, I this, thought it was this direction gonna be worse, but whoa! I mean, you don't. <laughs> These things show their age a little bit, hence my like. <laughs> My, I'm gonna die anyway. Like, so. So if it, yeah. That it, just kind of came off of me, at some point. Yeah. So there, there's usually like um, plat, hard plastic nuts, so that it, it kind of like latches on a little bit better. But. Elliot's landing traffic, Scott 3126 Echoes taking off to the south. Elliot's landing. No ice cream? Nah. <laughs> I got enough food I'm trying to eat at my house. Alright, so, got 10 degrees, hold the nose off. This be good practice for me. You ready to go? Yep. This will be a little bit different because we're going to hold the nose up so we don't dig into the a takeoff pretty slow. NBD. Tell me what you did there. Um, so I just held the, the yoke back a lot more because you don't want the nose wheel digging in just in case we hit a rut oh. and then flipping the plane. So, um, so, so yeah. rather than coming all the way up, brought it up just a little bit the whole time, which creates more drag, leaves us on the ground longer, but then... Sort of. So <clears throat> really the, the whole point is to make sure you get the nose up at that you hold the nose off the ground so it doesn't dig in. Yeah. So yeah, there's more there's more drag and you're more on the rear you're more on the main wheels, but you wanna you wanna keep it like nose high. You kinda wanna do a wheelie. Yeah. Until you get enough airspeed and then you wanna kind of like push the nose over so that you're in um, there's like a cushion of air that like the wings are producing. So you kinda wanna stay in that cushion of air and build up speed and then lift off. So that's kinda what we did. Gotcha. I mean, I'm assuming you you can do that on a uh, asphalt runway too. Just there's no reason to. Yeah. Yep. But we we practice it. Like okay, so there there you can kind of see right off to the right sticks of antennas and like maybe a tree line or hill line from over in Bell Fountain. I think. Yeah. I think kind of see rain over there too. So. How far did we just go? Um, I don't know. But you can see Columbus straight ahead. You can see the high rises of Columbus, yeah. downtown Columbus straight ahead. Yep. Um, I forget, so let's... And shit, I want to do this. Okay. Uh, 30 miles, 30.8 nautical miles. Okay. So... Um, I don't know. Uh, it's like one third, 35 miles. Ah. So there's this model of display of GPS navigation. It's like a it's not the model I'm used to, and you can swivel these knobs to change uh, the zoom aspect. 
And I don't... I just... These are kind of annoying. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's not the worst thing in the world, it's just kind of a... So what's that wheel down there? That's that's the cruise control, the twim, trim tab. That's that little tab on the back. So it just... Um, right, so like now... We're kind of descending, so you can kind of see that we're descending, but I can like pull this back a little bit and then use it. Oh, I gotcha. And so... We kind of stopped the descent, and now we're ascending a little bit. So, like, usually, it doesn't need a whole bunch, but it's... Kind of locks you in at a, uh altitude? Yeah. I mean, a lot of, like, I never really learned to use it properly. It's one of those things, like, your, your instructor's always telling you, like, use the trim tab, use the trim tab. And, like, until, until I, like, really wanted to fly, like, a certain altitude, you're like, I don't care, and, like... One of my instructors would actually take his pen, he was like, stick this between your fingers to like, because I would have to like hold the airplane down or up, and he's like, you're going to break that pen. <laughs> you just use the trim tab, just so you don't have to have as much of like a death grip uh, on, on on the stick. So like, now like I can... Because it does take some force to do... Yeah, so like... Gotcha. Put your, put, grab, grab the yoke. Alright, so... I'm going to trim it all the way nose down, and... I'm, I'm pulling back quite a bit, so like, okay. grab it, right? So I'm, so th there's that much pressure that yeah. you would have to hold. Otherwise, so now I'm gonna like. That makes sense. I'm gonna pull it off. And you see how it's like you need less pressure now. Yeah. So that's that's all it does. Yeah. But it's just a matter of. Uh, cool. Holding that, it's just that little that little thing. What kind of? We'll head. We'll head west. Kind of loop around. Got some time to kill. I want to give you the quarter tour, not the nickel tour. For it. Type something? Uh, what? Do you want me to type something? Uh, I mean, if, if it's freaking you out, help. Yeah, I mean, I think he got lucky, like, you could see downtown Columbus from 30, 37, four, oh, 40 miles away. I mean, that's, because, that's, like, the airport's probably a good five miles from downtown. Yeah. What, what is normal visibility? Uh, I mean, this is, this is pretty good. Or uh, like that. I mean, is just, that more typical, or? No, I mean, it's, I mean, it depends on the weather. Like, during the summer, like, you'll get, like, a layer of haze, yeah. such that you can kind of tell where the horizon is, but it'll be, like, I can't see definitely that there's a horizon. It's kind of like, yeah. it just, like, you lose the visibility, but there's, like, definitely, like, a bright part and a dark part, and that's yeah. about as, as good as you get. What's the highest up you've gone? 10,000, 10, 10,500 feet. I mean, it just doesn't make for good viewing, but like, uh, the engine's usually a little bit more efficient, and the air speed, uh, you'll pick up a little bit more speed. Uh, you get about, what is it, 2% per 1,000 feet? So it's not... Not insignificant. Huge, but yeah, like, you know, 10,000 feet, you're talking 20%, so... Yeah. So, uh, so that would be more if you're actually trying to cover some ground. Yeah, and if the clouds clouds allow it. So this is Richwood, and the only reason I know that is because I see the water tower. 
<laughs> Where's that water tower? Okay, I'll loop around. So this is... We're turning at 30 degrees, so there's 30 degrees of bank, which isn't a whole bunch, but not insignificant. Yeah. Makes me question if I trust this door. Yeah. There, you see the see the water tower. Nice little grain silo, some baseball fields, Main Street downtown, we got a stoplight. Looks like they have a racetrack too. <laughs> a nice little like fishing pond. I'm assuming that's the high school on the north end of the town. School looks like. Zero degrees on a compass is which direction? Straight north. North. I probably could have guessed that, huh? Ninety degrees is east. So they had to do it the fucking opposite way of uh, math. Yeah. Their math had to do it the fucking opposite way of... Um, I don't know. I don't know who was first. Cartesian coordinates or an actual discovery of magnetic properties. So that was Richmond. Alright, so here we go. We've got a friend coming at us. I mean, he's still pretty far away, so no, he's 700 feet above us. Off to our right somewhere. There's no way in hell we're going to find him. <laughs> in the clouds? I don't think the clouds are that high. Are the cl clouds are way higher than that. I mean, he's like right over here somewhere. Yeah. But at what at what height? Uh, I guess it 30, depends on 30, how 3600. Far away. It says it's 800 feet above us. Oh yeah, I got him. Yeah, see how fun that is? <laughs> I mean, he's, he's how close? Two miles away. <laughs> 10,000 feet. <laughs> A little black speck. Yep. What do you suppose this is? I don't know. Sorry. Type of reservoir, I suppose, but. Have you ever flown over? So, when I go home from, like, uh, I'm going to say Bellbrook, if I go from uh, Meyer on Wilmington and just straight out Wilmington all the way to 73. Okay. It's kind of out in the middle of nowhere. It's on the way to Waynesville. You know, it kind of splits Springboro and Waynesville. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. There's, there's some facility, and it's either just an indescript or 
Verizon building or some kind of top secret government facility. But it's got these crazy ass antennas and it's got what I, a million air conditioners on top. And it's got only what I can assume is a uh, cooling pond like built up next to it, but you can't see over the mound around the cooling pond. But there's a couple rich buckers that live right there and appear to be within the same fence, so it's hard to tell whether the pond is part of the top secret facility or if the pond is, uh, you know, somebody's fuck you money. I don't know. 73. Wilmington it, Pike, all the way down to 73. It's on Wilmington. And uh, I don't think it's called Wilmington down past there, but it it might as well be. Oh. Closer to 73 than any, than, uh, there's a little town called Lytle, I think. What are you checking right now? Uh, frequencies for this, where we're headed, it's not a... 23. Oh. <laughs> Oops. Nick's first mistake of the day. Uh, this is why flying with schmoes like me will kill you. So I put the frequency in, but I forgot to, there's a, this is a flip-flop. So this is one to use and standby. I was broadcasting on this frequency instead of the other frequency for the people back there, but there's no one around, so. Not a big deal, but they're probably like, that guy didn't say shit to us. What a dick. So this is, I think, part of the Olin Tangi, and this is, uh, you probably would never drive this road, but this is, I want to say 23, that takes, is kind of like a backwoods way for a lot of, if you want to go from Columbus, it kind of loops and kind of connects with, um, uh, what the hell is it? Um, 23 is what goes out to Marysville, right? 23, okay, and this is 33, and this goes, and when in, I think it's Finley, or, yeah, Finley, 75 kind of peaks uh, east, this kind of comes and joins it, so it's an easy way for, for me whenever I head, like, to Detroit or something, I take this all the way out, and it's just like a rural highway, but it's pretty freaking big, it's yeah. two lanes and everything. Is, so 33 is the one that actually goes right by the Scioto, by Katie's, right? By Katie's parents? I think so. Like River, uh, River always, Road or whatever for a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Yeah. So I think this is part of the Olin Tangi. So there's the dam there, but I think it huh. it, it just regulates it. I don't really know. But you can tell like water's down, typical in the fall. So like over there, the strut might be just blocking it, but like you can kind of see like it's muddy way back there. There's some campers out. Camping at some campsites. But you can kind of just tell that, like, if you look down, there's a lot more sandy gravel at the at the edges. Take a club plane somewhere, then I mean, how's that work? If you're flying three three hours away, land for an afternoon. It all depends on the club and their rules. So there's a flying club that I kind of like. I was a member of, and they had rules that if you rented the plane. They wanted uh, three hours per weekend day and one hour per weekday. So pretty much they wanted you to fly at least 11 hours if you had it for like a Sunday to Sunday, which um, is a pretty significant cost. Yeah. So this club is meant more for people to... I mean, it's, it's accommodating to people who want to do that, so they're like, you pay for the plane however long you want to use it, and that's how the club in Minnesota was. It was, you know, you're going to, if you want to fly your family to grandma's, for, and it's two hours away, 
um, you know, you're only going to spend the four hours, you're only going to be, you don't really have to pay four hours, the two there and the two back, and that's it. And it can sit on the ground for, you know, for the entire week just to make your, um, to make your trip easier for you and stuff. Oh. So. And it's, it's partly because the, the one club that I was a member of was really more geared for, like, people getting their license yeah. and moving on to the airlines or something. So, Trying like, they wanted, they, yeah, they wanted to kind of get, get all their money, money's worth and stuff, so. But, uh, I mean, that's why I, I wouldn't. Hey, planes are expensive to maintain and just have and hangar and all that crap, but it it gets to a point where you like fly enough, you're like, alright, I'm tired of like flying in the circle, I'd like to go somewhere and do like a really long one, so Yeah. Um I don't know, saving up my pennies for that. Yeah. But so this is Alum Creek, the big one, and then to the left is Hoover Dam and Hoover Reservoir. Those are the two big ones. And then kind of that city town over there is Delaware. Just on the north side of, since, or north side of Columbus. And then this is 71. Okay. Okay, here, check it out. Straight left. Look how straight that is. I don't know how, I don't know. I always, like, am dumbfounded, like, when I come out here and there's, like, there's certain points where you just see how straight 71 is. Yeah. And you can just, like, like there, like, straight yeah. down. It's just, like, I don't know how many miles of that, but, like, we, we missed it because I've flown around here enough that I've, like, get to the point where, like, I, there's, like, crooks and does, like, a hard 45. And I was just like, a line of white and red lights, just like, man. <laughs> I'm curious what this facility is over here. It's pretty big. Probably somebody's distribution center of some sort. Where are you looking? Just this white building over here. Just off the highway. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There, There's another view, like, I can see way off in the distance, 71, going straight again. I don't know. <laughs> that just kind of blows my mind whenever I see that. I can probably see Cleveland or part of South Cleveland from here. If it was clearer that way, probably... Yeah. Kind of makes me happy how much you like the uh, straight lines because <laughs> I tend to be more of a uh, right triangle guy, but uh, seems similar. <laughs> and so one of the kind of interesting things we're kind of away from a lot more of the farmland, but like you know the farmland was all surveyed ages ago. Um, and was it like? I forget like the terminology. It was like townships or one square mile or something. There's some like surveying thing where like they were surveyed in one square mile blocks. Uh. And you can kind of in farmland you can kind of see it a lot easier. Here we're getting towards some of the hills, so like there's more wooded land. But uh, is that what it is? The the hills are. I mean, we're really more trees. Really not. I don't know why there's not more farmland, but like, I mean, it's it's patchy farmland here, but like, it is. It's not e the checkerboard. Yeah, east of here or east of like Columbus, like flying towards Dayton, it's like all farmland. Yeah. Um. But I do know, like, so like people can you can kind of navigate that way. It's like, all right, like, am I on an east-west boundary road or a north-south boundary road? Good to go. But I think some of it was like. Uh, 
done magnetically instead of some other method. And there's been enough magnetic variation since then that now magnetic north isn't exactly where it was or there was deviation from when they did it such that it's really not a north-south road. It's like cockeyed a little bit. Huh. What purpose do you uh, record your flights? Uh, a little bit of shits and giggles, and then when I'm training, it just like helps me review the flight. Or sometimes I just talk to myself and be like, "Uh, yeah, you're doing this wrong." So like, I don't have to write a note because it's just a pain in the ass to write it down and stuff. And then um, I do have this. Uh, I didn't do it this flight. I don't know why. Uh, this guy, and I'll stick it actually on the the wing. Or like either on the strut or the the landing gear, and uh, then I can see how well I position the plane when I come into land because you kind of want to land a little nose high. But off to my left, you can see these guys harvesting this corn in this field, and I always oh, kinda, yeah. I always kind of like that, especially at night. Um, yeah, because they'll have their lights on and everything. And it's kind of cool to see. Uh, I'm gonna try and whip around here, so I'm gonna turn to the right and we'll get you a better view of it. So with you going for your next... There's something like a burning brush or a car on fire <laughs> on, the, on this road. Oh, yeah. You see it. <laughs> with you going for your uh, next license, are you just logging hours, or are there specific things, your boxes you're checking, or both? Uh, there's specific maneuvers, and they're all on this little card right here. <laughs> um, so there's things called... Uh, where the hell those guys go? Oh. Um, uh, so there's certain types of landings. Soft field is what we did over at the grass strip. Um, there's also something called short field, where it's you're landing in a short distance, so you want to like really like nail what you're aiming for. Yeah. Um, uh, what else? Soft field, short field. There's a thing called the power off 180. So that's when you're kind of close to where you're going to land, and you just like pull all the power out, and you have to land without any power or using any power when you come into land. You just have to like, and you're supposed to land within 200 feet of a point that you pick out. So you're supposed to like, it's supposed to show that you're kind of like mastery of knowing how the plane's going to behave and judging things based on how much wind is out there. Gotcha. Um, Let's not do that one. Sure. <laughs> um, so those are the those are the landings, and there's takeoffs that kind of go along with that. And we did uh, that soft field kind of landing or soft field takeoff, where like I hold the nose off and then kind of like lower it to kind of accelerate in that ground effect. Um, and they got a lot of work to do yet. Lots of There's rows. A whole, a whole row right below us. The whole, oh, yeah. whole field right below us. It's still fuzzy. That's pretty cool to see the contrast. And there are a lot of rich fuckers out here. So there you can, I think it's hard to tell, but that's like a hill, a pretty big hill, right? There was like that yeah. grass with that mottled stuff on it. Like, I agree. Um, it is.
is hard to tell from up here. Yeah, but I'm pretty sure that's like a not pretty significant. It's, yeah, it's like. I wonder what's up with the grass. So have you you flown over uh, like Hocking Hills, I assume, in like Southern Ohio? Not really. Um, I only flew I flew down to Athens once as part of a cross country. Yeah. Uh, so it, for training, you do have to do these kind of like long flights to like make sure you're not you know you've gotten that under your belt and at least kind of know what you're doing. But I actually flew to well, I kind of I kind of did because I flew to um, Virginia for one of my flights, and so I was actually really cool going over the uh, Appalachians. Like they're not that high, but it was just like pure wooded forest. Yeah. You know, out of a house, out of a house, small clearing, and just like really cool, beautiful scenery. I thought. Is that uh, so? I like that road. Yeah. Kind of following. Um, but like around here, it feels like um, there are uh, unlimited emergency landing places. Very true. Yep. So flying over wooded Appalachia is that nerve wracking is a very strong word. Um, but is it more? Uh, it's definitely more dangerous. Concerning. It's definitely it's definitely more dangerous because of uh, multiple reasons. Uh, if slash when you land, um, you're gonna you have very limited options, and most likely you're gonna land in. If you can slow the plane down enough and crash nicely, you're gonna end up in the trees. Yeah, which isn't the worst thing in the world. Like trees are actually uh, pretty decent because um, they slow you down. It's yeah, it's just like a, a NASCAR wreck. You want to hit, you want to, like, sacrifice kinetic energy, like, crash, yeah. crash the wings, break the wings off, blah, 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 save the cabin. Yeah. Um, and then you, there's, there's, I've seen a video of actually a guy crashing into a tree, and the, the wings are actually, you know, they're, they're strong. So you'll kind of, like, end up hanging in the trees, but then you have to get out of the, get out of the tree. Um, but then it's also rescue of... You're in the middle of nowhere, and it's not easy to get to. Yeah. And so there is this um, this ELT, emergency locator translator. Yeah. It's a radio beacon, and anymore it it's um it's monitored by like government agencies, and they'll they'll know where you're at, that you were in a crash, uh, and they'll they'll um send search and rescue out to you or to try and find you. Um, it might be an airplane first to like spot you yeah but you know if you're not somewhere relatively close to something yeah it's going to be a while you're going to be if you're in any type of like medical distress yeah you're going to be bleeding out yeah I mean not to stay on bad topics but uh there's not bad etiquette. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't bother me. Like, it's yeah. it's a risk. Like, just right. you you getting in this conflict right now is a huge risk because like airline people are trained all the time. Like, I am not trained all the time in all these things. So right. like, never. um, oh, but, hold on, see something fun? I think somebody has a huge freaking slip and slide. <laughs> If, uh, so it's like it's like right behind us right now, but there's like new construction. It looks like this kind of like gray house slash farm. Oh, I see it. And you see that blue thing? I yeah. think that's just a huge tarp that leads into the water. I agree. <laughs> I agree with you. I think it's a huge freaking slip and slide. <laughs> I want to be friends with those people. Not just for the slip and slide, but... I mean, they're the, the type look, of people that came up with that. Look at this little house down here with, like, the little pool and, like, the water thing. Yeah. That looks freaking nice. Yeah, it's... That that in the woods, that's my future home right there. Yeah. But how... <laughs> that is just crazy. Is that a house or is that, like, a lodge of some See, sort? See, I think that the house is this way in the woods, and yeah. that's, like, farm the barn. stuff. But that is a huge slip and slide. I agree. <laughs> That's awesome.
They've got it pulled up right now. Yeah. I mean, but you can tell like all the grass is dead around. Yeah. It. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Those are fun people. Yeah. They they know how to have fun. They're using their money for good and not evil. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so straight off to our west, you can kind of see one of the airports. It's you can kind of see the hangars. It's about two thirds of the way to the horizon. It's it's relatively close. Straight straight west. Straight straight along the the window or the straight along the uh, the wing. Oh yeah. It's like right big. right yeah, now right now I'm kind of like blocking yep. the yeah. I see it. I bet the slip and slide people drink Bud Light. Oh, I don't doubt it. I bet there's a lot of it. <laughs> a lot of Bud Light pee in that pool. <laughs> All right, let's do this. So you're pretty good at spotting interesting things. And that's one of the, I mean that's one of like the terrible uses of me burning egregious amounts of dinosaur juice <laughs> in this thing. Got to find cool shit and be like, man. I wish I had that much money. <laughs> right. Because then you find people doing shit like putting a frickin' slip and slide that's a giant water feature. What do you think that was? How long do you think that was? Oh, I have no idea. I bet it was 100 feet. Traffic, uh, that would be a 482 Golf update, 19. I don't want that. I want this. So this is like a Garmin with pre-programmed destinations and stuff in there? So it has a, a database that has to get updated every so often to be legal for use in certain um, flight modes. So, I mean, it has like frequencies, airport, gen generic airport info that you can find elsewhere. Um, it's just like an all-in-one kind of guy. So, here you can kind of see hill country. It might get a little bit bumpier because we are... Um, flying over like more hills and stuff in this area. But um, we're going to land and try and get gas at this next base. Just because the person in front of me didn't top the tanks off and pretty sure the gas is cheap. Actually, is there a book in there? Or maybe a binder. It might be here behind you. I'm looking for a credit card. Is, is there a credit card around there? That look right. Uh, it'll be. And if not, I'll just use mine and have them pay me back. But. out a little bit better. Not the worst thing. Yellow Unicom, touch at 792. But I mean, I think you kind of have to look out to the horizon a little bit to see more of the hill features kind of coming in. Um, Otherwise, you're just like, oh, there's just a whole bunch of trees out there. Allen County traffic. Uh, you got a point at us five miles to the south, inbound for 27, Allen County. Can't tell uh, the trees or the hills, huh? But I, 
I don't know, to my left, I can kind of tell that this is definitely like rolling hills. You can kind of see where like the drainage yeah. from that hill area. Point minus zero two Celsius. Altimeter three zero two five. Remarks. Density altitude two hundred. <laughs> Newark Heath Airport, Newark, Ohio. Automated weather observation two one four one Zulu. Wind two one zero at zero three. Visibility one zero. So what do we do? Circle around to the other side of Columbus? Yep. Yeah, so we're east of Columbus, so... It's that way somewhere? <laughs> or maybe straight that way. It's probably straight that way. Because I think that's old 161. Or we're not far from Ohio Lina right now, right? Right, yeah. I mean, it's that way a little bit. What's this? Uh, Newark Heath area. So it's Newark is straight ahead of us. Actually, I think on the horizon, um, it's the, a white color, but it's water. I think that's actually Buckeye Lake, which huh. is south of uh, south of 70, like this far out. Newark Heath traffic, Scott 3126 echoes about 8 to the north. We'll be overflying the field at 2500 and then uh, having a 45 to downwind for landing 27, Newark Heath. I can definitely see this as a hill. <laughs> and I know that there is some really, really rich person that lives out here. It's one of like the largest houses in the U.S. And I think the house is for sale. Um, it used to be the owners of um, Longaburger Baskets, because Longaburger Baskets are out here. Uh -huh. And we might be able to see it, but there's a building in the shape of a Longaburger Basket in Newark Heath. That's still up? Yeah. I just drove by it like the other week. Somebody just pulled that up on the internet and showed it to me really? the past month. Hello, so traffic jet jet 792, Challenger jet, uh, left base, runway 28. Okay, so there, this is old 161, or this is 161. You can kind of see it in front of us. You can kind of see the it coming straight at us with the... Yep. Or no, no, maybe it's it's this other one. It's not this one coming yeah, at us. It. It's this other one. So, longer burger baskets over there somewhere. I can't see it. Newark Heath traffic, Scott 3126, Echo, three miles north, uh, overflying the field at 2500, and then descending down from 45 to downwind for runway 27, uh, Newark Heath. Uh, I, I, 792, Challenger Jet, uh, about a two mile final, runway 28. I see it. Um, just 
because I know what I'm looking for, but like, it's not, you know, like, oh, that's totally a, <laughs> it doesn't look like a basket from here. But there's like a red stoplight along the snaky road, and there's this orange-brown building. We'll fly over it when we leave. What does I have self-serve here? If not... So what kind of response did you get out of uh, so the tower? So there's no tower here. It's someone landing somewhere else, because there's only a certain number of frequencies that we have. So they'll, they're reused quite a bit. So he was at, so that's why I always say Newark Heath, and that is definitely Buckeye Lake. But I'm saying where I'm at, so that I'm not giving someone else, so I'm not just like, oh, I'm landing, and they're like, where are you landing? Because I'm on the same frequency as yeah. as other people. Lights are already on. Traffic, Archer 41229 is three miles to the northwest. We're plenty on left down wind for 28 Delaware. Newark Heath traffic, track 3126 echoes on downwind for runway 27, full stop. Newark Heath. Looks like they're building new hangars. Woo! We've got a jet. Old, old school, like, military oh, jet. Yeah. Alright, let's get this biatch slowed down. Keith traffic, Scott 3126 Echoes turning base for only 27, full stop, Newark Keith. There, there you can kind of see the, the basket off to the left here, oh, yeah. or the right. Newark traffic, Scott 3126 Echoes on final for my 27, Newark Heath. Ah. And was a little bit too strong. Didn't plan that 100% right. Delaware traffic, Archer 41229, turning a left downwind, 28 Delaware. There's a jet going into Columbus, I'm pretty sure. Eric Heath traffic, Scott 3126 Echoes, clear the active. You felt that landing, right? Yeah, I mean... That wasn't like bad, but it was like... No. That was actually pretty decent again. You're getting lucky, I don't know why. <laughs> I 
I'm laughing because I read what Sarah means. <laughs> what percent of your flights do you actually review? I mean, there's a 2% for when I land. <laughs> Uh, usually not a whole, whole bunch because um, this plane doesn't have it, but there's uh, some of the planes have mounts here for the GoPro, yeah. and you, you, you get a better See feel what of doing. what's going on outside and inside. So. Yeah. I, I ask because I record tennis footage sometimes. I don't review a lot of it. Yeah. And it's just, there's just so much. Like, I, what I will do is sometimes I, well, I, I was kind of being um, facetious, but at the same time, like, uh, I, I will, if I do, I'll usually play it back at, like, 4X. Because I'm not going to sit there and watch yeah. it at 1X. I'll, I'll watch it at 4X. Keep traffic, Scott, 3126 Echoes, taking off runway 27, departing to the east, west. Newark Keith. All right, here we go. Door? You got your door? Yep. All right. I should uh, take off number three. guys. Oh. So they have a big Boeing plant over here. <laughs> now I know because there's Boeing on the side of it. <laughs> oh. It's crazy how like there's random facilities like Boeing in these small towns in the middle yeah. of nowhere. I wonder what this thing is. They have a shit ton of docks on the other side. Brand new. I don't think it's open yet, really. I don't think so either.
there's just a crazy amount of money people put in their houses. Like, <laughs> if I didn't have this crack addict hobby, like, <laughs> I'd probably put a lot of money in the house too. Like, again, like that black house down there, three sections to it. Yeah. Pool, at, pool in the back. Yeah. <laughs> Ohio, like, and they're not like a huge town at all. And there's some south big ass <laughs> Christmas lights. You see the house? Ohio. Too soon. South, 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 south. Not even Thanksgiving, people. Although Quinn and I went to the uh, Christmas parade in downtown Springboro today. Oh really? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, once once Halloween was done, the very next day I went to Kroger and they had Christmas stuff out, and like all the candy was like half off or oh yeah, ninety percent off. I was like. You can't buy any, Nick. Don't buy any. Don't buy any. I did. Brief. I did. Did not. Yeah, the candy. I was gonna like. Yeah. I would have bought like Kit Kats, all kinds of crap. <laughs> okay, so that is 161. We should fly over. Uh, what's his face's house? Oh, Les Wex Wexner. Yeah, and it's a huge ass complex. And then hopefully there'll still be enough light um, when we get there. But uh, I was flew when I flew out this way last. I uh, saw this um, this crazy ass house that's not very far from where I live. I was like, "What? Where is where is this thing?" And uh, I found that it's, it's again it's behind. It has like a little pool, like not pool but like pond, um. and it's got a really high berm that blocks people's view in and I was like oh that's yeah. how they do that's how they're hidden because it's kind of like by a it's by the Hoover Four, Hoover Dam and okay. it was just like I go there all the time to go like hike and stuff and so I was just like why have I never seen this and I like now I was like ah now I know what that thing is back there <laughs> but it's uh it's this crazy crazy architect ar architected house and I was just like wow that thing is cool huh Newark's got a lot of money in general, doesn't it? I guess. I don't know. I mean, the big wig who runs that Boeing factory has got to have a lot of money. <laughs> yeah. So I think where all those lights are, so for you it's probably like that way, well, is... Granville. I'm not 100% okay. sure because I mean we we go biking. I go biking out in Granville area uh, quite a bit. Oh, we might have passed it already. That's where like that uh, blues fest or whatever is, isn't it? Uh, yeah. So it's funny. Uh, Tom and Paige got for Christmas last year a weekend. Hotel for uh, Katie and I, and then Katie's brother and his wife. And the way it panned out, we ended up in like some place in Newark. <laughs> it's supposed to be in Granville. <laughs> Did like a cannonball run. So see a weekend in Granville, and instead we like showed up at 7 p.m. on Saturday and left as soon as we woke up on Sunday. <laughs> You're like, thanks, but Gra no thanks. Grab dinner, sat at the brewery. Okay, so... This is the golf course at the intersection. So we're going to come up on it here pretty soon. I need to head a little to the left so you get a view out to your right. Do 
just tucked out here along with with the cornfields or what? No, he's he's really like right up to next to town. So in town okay. is uh, New Albany. New Albany. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. So like, there's a whole bunch of like data centers and crap that's going up out here. So that's what this thing is straight ahead of us and all okay. these like lights. There's a Google and a Facebook data center. Okay. And then up here on the right, on the other side of the 161, is a whole bunch of new warehouses and stuff. And like, there's also like a chemical plant for some type of like um, Bed Bath & Beyond or flour, not flour, um, candle place. Huh. So you get close to it and you just like smell this heavy scent of like yeah. kind of perfume. I mean, I would, I get like headaches if I have like a really strong scent for a really long time, so. But yeah, so these are like the warehouses on this side over that way. Um, Delaware, Charlie, 7814, turn base, 284, South Delaware. So here's the data center. So beyond this, there's going to be a clearing. And there's a a road, there's there's a road that parallels the highway, and it has a, a road that goes into the guest house, which is freaking humongous, <laughs> and then there's going to be, like, stables, there's going to be a clearing, and inside the stables and stuff is going to be where, like, the main house is. His wife has horses and stuff, and so they have like Delaware, traffic, seven, eight, one, a four, horse four, final, event um, in the summer, fall, some, sometime. And Jeffrey Epstein ha had a house out here somewhere to molest children. <laughs> Yeah, these data centers just went up, and I have friends that have a house right over there somewhere, and they bought a whole bunch of land when, like, 161 was a, a really small, um, like, a single-lane highway or something, uh -huh. and they've been selling off bits and pieces of their land, and I was like, so you guys are sitting on a gold mine, and they're kind of like, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So it should be, should be like right here. I think it might be this thing right here in the clearing. So there's a golf course that looks like right here. Yep. And his house is, yeah, so his house, you can see like the gardens and stuff all partitioned off. And it's just like, you can see kind of like the brownish tops to the house. Yep. That's his house. So like. That's one house. Yeah, that's, that's his house. That's so not like. There's like the white guard tower, I think. Yep. That is like the entrance. It looks kind of like a stable or a barn yep. or something. Yep, like I think that's tower. like a guard house and everything. Um, yeah, so there's all the horsey stuff. And then this white thing kind of just to the north with some one or two lights. Yeah. That's the guest house. So you see it right there? Yeah. That's the guest house. But yeah, that's... This is his house. That's his house. It's a hell of a courtyard. Jesus. <laughs> I mean, just look at the guest house. The guest house is freaking humongous. Helicopter 344 Alpha Max, about four miles uh, to the northeast, transitioning. Southwest 2000. It's impressive. Delaware. Isn't that nuts? You don't want to put the guest house too close to the main house in case you don't like the guests that much. Apparently. That is uh, palatial, right? Is it's that the right, is that the appropriate word? It's a house fit for a billionaire. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so let's see if I can navigate you. Okay, I think. So you see this water tower right off of the, uh, yeah. the interstate? I live right by there in a really crappy apartment. Um, but it's great because I get right on the highway and I go to work. Yeah. And it takes me five minutes to get onto the highway with, like, heavy traffic. Okay, so here's the here's Hoover Dam. Um, I think I need...
need to go to the right a little bit. So, you're going to have to look down and look fast, but if I get it right. But there's this, there's this, this east-west road. Okay. It's going to kind of curve through the woods up here. Yep. And look down, and there's off to the... Before you hit, I think you can kind of see the lights of it. Before you hit the uh, the water, there's going to be a little pond, and in the pond is going to be like these seashell shaped um, parts of the building, and that's this rich dude's house. He was like, uh, "What did he? Yep, so it's right here. So you can kind of see it has like a water slide." You can't kind of tell from here, it just looks like there's a little building on the water, but inside of that is, uh, it, has, it used to have like a helicopter pad and shit. So they're kind of like seashell, like don't, not domes, but like half, uh -huh. half shells to it. I mean, it's like... That's on the water. Yeah, so it's got like a little, it's own private pond and stuff back there. Ah, cool. Um, yeah. What body, this is Hoover? This is Hoover Dam. So this is Westerville we're kind of flying over. Okay. And I need to. Now, uh, time 2153, Zulu weather, wind 2007, visibility 10, ceilings 9,500 overcast. Temperature 9, dew point minus 2, altimeter 3024. Expect the visual with the RNAV GPS approach, landing and departing, runways 27 left, 27 right. VFR departures provide ground control with your on-course heading in degrees. As this weather emits affect Central Ohio, contact flight service for further information. Advise on the initial contact, you have information alpha. Alpha. So you can kind of see the flashing lights of the runway. It's straight ahead and to the right, maybe yeah. at 30 degrees. So those are the, the lights at the those end of the runway. Those are flashing lights. Yep. Huh. And then this red vertical light is the Budweiser plant. Uh, yep. Have you ever seen that on? Yep. What are the rules as far as like flying? The cornfields are different than the uh, city, obviously, right? Uh, basically, it's supposed to be like, in the event of a power failure, you cause no one on the ground any undue risk. So, we're kind of low now, so we're not really breaking the rules, but like, if we lost the engine, they'd, I might lose my license and be like, well, you shouldn't have been, you should have been higher. But here, there's the, um, actually the um, Columbus Airport. Yeah. has airspace above us, so I can't really go that much higher. So you're trying to... Yeah, so it's like, uh, it is what it is. And you just have to plan for that? You just have to flight plan for that to know yeah. to know what the fuck is around you? Yeah, but like, it's one of those things where it's kind of like, oh, your taillight was busted, that's why we stopped you, and then we found out that you had weed in the car or something. Like, it's one of those things kind of like, catch-all in a sense, I don't know. Yeah. And then what about like, you know, flying over the stadium or flying over downtown? Hey, give me a second. Yep. Ohio State Tower, uh, Cessna 3126 Echo, uh, 8 to the east, inbound with uh, Alpha, full stop. 3126 Echo, State Tower, report crossing High Street on final runway 27 left. 27 left, and we'll let you know we're across High Street. Um. So, hold on, tell me what just happened right there. I just told him where I am and how I'm coming in and that I want to land, and he told me, because they kind of do traffic flow and I'm kind of a ways out, he told me, plan on landing on 27 left, which is the, the runway, and let me know when you hit High Street, because then he'll clear me to land. Okay. Just in case, because sometimes, like, I've been out really far, and they have it's late at night, and they're just like... Coaching 56 Lima Tower on departure, fly heading 270, climb and maintain um, 3000, runway 27 left here, clear for takeoff. They, they have somebody, and so they're just like, uh, clear to land, and you're like, I'm like still 10 miles out, dude, but they like, they don't care, because... Yeah. We're landing.
landing in this direction. Yep, so they um, run way straight ahead of us. So, like, early on, would you uh, loop way the fuck around and get lined up like this from a long way away? No, so if, coming, if I'm coming from, like, where we came from, I'd, I'd come at the, um, pretty much head straight for the airport, and then they'd, uh, they'd give me directions, coming, kind of coming in. My gotcha. How, uh, how much time before we're at wheels down right now, you think? Two minutes, maybe? Uh -huh. So you can kind of tell there's a there's a jet that's lined up or somebody yeah. at the end of the runway. You waiting on us? No. State Tower three one two six Echo just crossed High Street. Three one two six Echo State Tower runway two seven left clear to land one two two zero at eight. Clear to land two seven left three one two six Echo. Lights on. So there, you can see the light as it's progressing down the runway. And you have to know which one's left and which one's right. Yeah, I mean, it's rare that they would have me land on two seven right, um, but that they've that they've done it before. Two seven right isn't even in use right now, right? It's right, not, but you can kind of you can kind of see the lights. Yeah, yeah. Call three five six Lima contact on the Have a good night. Forward to departure now, Gulf Stream 5 to Lima. There we go. Caught the short one. Two six echo. Turn left. Delta Alpha. Taxi to parking. Monitor the ground. Point seven of the ramp. Delta Alpha. Parking. Monitor ground. Point seven three two one two six echo. It makes me feel good that I did. Like it, that I landed within that space so I could get this. <laughs> get the first driveway. Yeah. Because yeah. we're over here. Otherwise, I have to taxi down farther. Yeah. And then uh, kind of loop around. That's what I figured the celebration was. I didn't anticipate getting a little bit bit of uh, nighttime in. That was kind of cool. Yeah, it was. You just kind of we didn't get like a late late start, but like it's dark and the clouds kind of. Really, yeah. That's one of the other club planes. I don't think I've ever flown that one. That one's just a it's a two seater. It's cheaper, but that one's cheaper. Yeah. Is it newer? Or does it just look, no. look kind of nice from here? Uh, I don't know how nice it is. I'm, I'm assuming it's relatively nice. Uh, I've just never been in it. I mean, this plane... There was a guy at work who's kind of asked to go up, and I just, I've never had the opportunity to take him up, but he's like... I know that the insides are kind of like a beat-up old um, Volkswagen. I'm like, yeah. I'm glad you got your expectations right, because that's pretty much what it's kind of like. It's yep. not, I mean, they're, ex they're expensive things. Like, this thing's probably worth between seventy and and $100,000 at this point. Yeah. They're, 
prices have kind of gone up with uh, the pandemic, but then um, just in general, they're 